Our mission is to change the lives of people with disabilities by pairing them up with a specially trained dog just for them. They are born and whelped in a volunteer's home. Aw, you've got such a great life ahead of you. And then they all go to prison and are part of our prison program. Make sure to get their butt in. When I first got arrested, I was 18 years old. I was facing life. I knew I had to correct some things. The PAWS program, for me, helped me bet on myself. Puppies is like medication sometimes. I have Parkinson's disease. It was like heaven sent. I knew that there was something there to assist me. My dog helped me a lot. Knows where I am at all times. He's my best friend. I am a type 1 diabetic. His job is to make sure I don't die. Like, that's not what normal golden retrievers have to do. We were able to help transform the lives every single year. It's a rewarding job for a very special type of dog. It's a journey, and that journey starts now. Over the course of two years, the dogs move through many, many hands during the process. <laughs> we breed most of our own dogs. They are born and whelped in a volunteer's home. I am a breeder host, and with that, I have a female dog that lives at my house. But then I also watch for her to go into heat, and then we work on the breeding process. A few weeks before the mom has her litter, then she moves into what we call a whelping home, and then they actually deliver the puppies. So the first day, they have a leeway to sleep, but then we start right away training. Holding them, touching their toes, putting them on their back. All of these pieces together help stimulate their brain. When they're about three weeks old, we're putting little onesie t-shirts on them so that they can get used to having their capes. And then they will go into a puppy raiser home. We'll have that pup for about 10 weeks. House manners, general obedience, going on short trips to the grocery store, to the library, just letting them get exposed to uh, different surroundings. She has never been in a large parking lot before on a windy day, so there's lots of stimulation, leaves blowing, people moving. Sometimes there'll be, you know, carts rattling, people with bags and everything. So all of those things are novel objects for her. Good girl. Yes. Being in an environment that has different types of uh, flooring surfaces like this are fabulous for them. So it gives them a chance to feel very different surfaces. There's so many things you can teach a dog and they're so eager to learn, especially if you have enough cookies. Down, yes, oh, great. He doesn't really like cameras. Uh, he's never really been a fan, uh, but I'm sure he'll warm up soon. Hey, come here. Oh, there we go, sit. There you go, now people can see you. Willie is a diabetic alert dog. I am a type one diabetic. He can smell when my blood sugars are too low, if they're too high. So if my blood sugar were to get low, nudging is one way he alerts, and he can essentially tell me to fix it or find someone who can. I have a continuous glucose monitor that I wear so I can see on my phone in real time what my blood sugars are doing, but Willie can detect my lows and my blood sugars quicker than my devices can. It's insane that he can smell this. The training they do is pretty amazing. He has saved my life once already. I should have been in a coma. If he wasn't there, I wouldn't be here. It's important to kind of keep that positive reinforcement going because their job is really hard. His job is to make sure I don't die. Like that's not what normal golden retrievers have to do. <laughs> what? <gasps> yeah? You're right. Are you touching? It went down five levels. Good job. I can live an independent life because of Willie. Willie gave me my life back. Thank you, Willie. <laughs> Thank you. Puppies go to prison. Our dogs come into prison about five months of age, and they leave anywhere six, nine, 12 months later. It's a huge benefit to us, what these inmate handlers do for us, because a puppy that's in prison is pretty much the sole focus of that inmate. 
I spend basically all night and all day with the dog. The dog is basically with me 24 seven. The individual skills they learn, I don't know, it's like 75 different things. So I have them move from heel to side. Make sure to get their butt in. So if they have to use a little pocket hand on the outside, perfect, well done. I think it's a great opportunity for us to give something back to the community. To be able to do this while you're serving a sentence, it helps a lot. 25 years on that side of the fence is a long time, especially in dog years. <laughs> when I first got arrested, I was 18 years old. I was facing life. I knew I had to correct some things, you know, about me. I had to hold myself accountable for my actions. The only good thing I had was the PAWS program. Those puppies is a powerful tool. The PAWS program, for me, helped me bet on myself. Good job, babies. Look at that good puppy. Oh, you yes, see so good. Yeah. They bring the voices out you. You in there talking about some, hey, you cook, 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 you. you know, he just, puppies is like medication sometimes. They calmed a lot of people down. It's an amazing two-way street that is crucial to what we do. Because of the prison programs, definitely able to get more dogs trained in a smaller amount of time. And that just helps us be able to get those dogs out to the clients who need them to be able to change lives. My goal is for the dogs, by the time they're done with their stay here in prison, that any one of them could leave and be a mobility assist dog. So when they leave here, I want them ready to go out to the client. This is Laverne, and yes, she has a sister named Shirley. She doesn't have the vest on. She's playful, she can be a pup. As soon as she puts the vest on, it's a big difference, night and day difference. When we put that cape on, Laverne transforms into a dog that is fully focused on Marty, who's her person, and she is fully at service and knows it. Thank you. I have Parkinson's disease. The moment I met Laverne, it was like heaven sent. I knew that there was something there to assist me, that I didn't have to depend on my wife all the time. She's dedicated to him. She focuses on him. Uh, she also knows when he's gonna have a bad day before we do. My biggest issues are balance. When I reach down for items, my blood pressure tends to drop very quick and as a result, pass out. One day I walked into another room, I fell, I busted some glass. I was stunned, I needed help. Laverne, she was there and she got my phone. I was able to make that phone call that I needed. And then once I was feeling well enough to get up, I was able to use her front quarters and brace myself to be able to get up. It's real important to me to know that he has that here for him. And that gives me peace of mind, and he knows he has help close by. I think I got the best service dog in the world. She's playful. She's smart. Laverne has given us the ability to go do what we want, when we want, and we do it. We're living life because of her. This is a room that's set up like an apartment. We want them to train in an environment that's going to be like the environment they will have once they move in with their client. This is it. This is the last three to four months of training and they'll be on their way. We call it final training or finishing training. So that is, you know, right around two years, might be a little bit later than that. At final training, dogs are really learning to refine all of the basic cues that they know. Basic skills that we teach the dogs end up being very easy to transfer into higher level skills. Things like a hand nudge that transfers over into closing a door or a drawer. And so all of those things really build upon one another as that dog moves into their final training experience. When they come in, our training staff will evaluate them and just try to figure out what does that dog intrinsically enjoy doing. Does this dog learn best by hearing visual learners? Do they need it to feel more like a game at first? Are they super serious workers? Do they like to use their nose? Do they really listen to a lot of things? Then we'll start working on those specific skills that they will need for that career path. 